So very cool. Well, I am glad you guys are all here. We're going to go ahead and get started so I can get you guys in and out. And I know this is the end of your day. I know you guys have had um, just being online all day is just, it's a lot of work for you. And, and I applaud you for, for everything that you're doing because uh, you guys are you truly are rock stars and um, you're doing a great job. And I know, like I say that, and I know you probably hear that a lot, but I just want to again reiterate, you guys are doing things that nobody has done before. Um, even myself, as, as much as I think that I have some skill and knowledge of teaching, I have zero skill and knowledge of doing what you're doing right now. And you guys genuinely are the experts um, and the front line of just this incredible thing of, of teaching um, these students right now. So, so let me get, kind of go through our day today. Um, we have, uh, today is our agenda. So we're going to go over our check-in form again um, in a few minutes here. And then Mr. Matt Stewart is with us today. He's going to kind of uh, talk to you guys about who, and we'll kind of introduce him a little bit better to, in a few minutes here. Then we're going to take a break after Matt talks. That and then awesome. three of our teachers are going to share with you guys and, and kind of lead you guys in learning about um, the California Standard for Teaching Profession number one. Uh, just that name in and of itself does not sound like it's the most exciting thing to learn, but I promise you uh, they, it, they've got some exciting stuff to give you. So first thing we're gonna do is we've got kind of an 80s theme going on. And I actually had a dream last night that David was wearing an all 80s attire. And then I woke up this morning and he was not screaming the, the hair that I thought he had. But um, so we're gonna do a Kahoot. It's 80s theme. So what you're gonna do is go to Kahoot.com it and type in that passcode. So that was very good. So now I know you guys know your 80s. So um, David, the floor is yours. I'll let you take it from here. Hey, so in a minute or two, everybody, Chris is going to send you into some breakout rooms randomly. And you'll have seven minutes, probably about a minute each, minute and a half, to share something positive or challenging that came up since the last tip meeting. So about a month ago, if it's not exactly within the last month, that's not a problem. We will come back and each group will have about three minutes to share out. So if your group can decide on what was the most positive thing you wanna share and also the most challenging thing. So you're each gonna share one positive or challenging thing and then in total, what was the most positive and what was the most challenging in your groups. So, um, so thank you so much for sharing and, I, and David, I really just wanted you guys to be able to hear from each other because a lot of times you can feel like you're isolated, especially now when you're teaching from home um, or you're in your class by yourself. And it's really important for you guys to connect and I encourage you, don't just connect here at TIP, but seriously connect with each other. Um, and just, if anything, just to encourage one another. So, um, so we're gonna skip, um, we're, not gonna, we're gonna come back to this next part and I wanna jump to, um, having Matt Stewart in here. Uh, he's here to kind of share with you guys um, just what he's, where he's at as far as teaching goes, his experience. Um, and I, what I do wanted to do is ask, I, Elaine is here and I wanted her to introduce him because Elena was more so his mentor um, when he first came in. And then Matt was in your guys' seat last year. Most of you probably remember him who were sitting with him in TIP last year. Um, and so he is a third year teacher for us, but I wanted to turn it over to Elena um, to introduce Mr. Matt Stewart. All right, thank you, Chris. Um, wow. Yes, Matt, has it only been three years? <laughs> uh, it's been three and a half because I long-term subbed the first six months. That's right, it feels like you've just been here for a lot longer. So ladies and gentlemen, it's good to see all of you. I'll just take a couple seconds and introduce um, Matt Stewart. Most of you might be familiar with um, what he teaches. He's our STEAM shop teacher out at Orangewood High School. I've had the um, pleasure of being his mentor a couple years ago, and um, it, was, it was a fabulous experience. I hope he, he feels the same way. Um, I learned a lot about um, STEAM shop and um, all the great things that he has been able to accomplish in his program. He is full of knowledge and he will tell you you know, how he felt the first time he showed up here and then um, how he has his growth and, and how much he has become um, one of our um, best teachers. And then I will also share with you that um, just this past summer, he was one of um, three Cry Rock teachers that were nominated for Teacher of the Year for San Bernardino County. 
So um, we don't take that stuff lightly and um, we don't nominate everybody, but um, he has demonstrated a work ethic and um, a responsibility and a commitment to his um, students that is evident through all of the things that they have been able to accomplish in such a very short period of time. So with that, um, you're in for a treat today and ask him questions. He's um, full of really good stuff. And then he has the experience of also being on our one of our alternative campuses, which is completely different than being where most of you are, which is the comprehensive high school. So his experience is completely different as is Aaron Nagy, who is at our, um, another one of our continuation high schools. So they experience things that you guys um, don't get to see very often or, or don't want to see very often. So, um, so with that, <laughs> welcome, Matt. It's a pleasure to have you on TIP and um, take it away. Thank you, Elena. And thank you, Chris. And thank you everyone for being here to hello to everybody, the ones that I know and the ones that I don't know. Um, I was asked to do a presentation on, on classroom management. Okay. I, I think partially that's because I teach at an alternative high school, right? What, what, what Aaron and I see every day is on some level, the same as what you see on another level is completely different, right? It's uh, it's a, it can be the wild, wild west sometimes. Right. So I, I've learned some things in the last three and a half years. And, and like I said, I, I started long-term subbing, you know, just, just like, uh, Deborah has, right? Deborah's done the same thing. She, she's even subbed in my classroom at some point. Um, and you learn these things and this is what I've come up with. I come up with a 10, 10 bullet point and here's how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna, gonna say each bullet point and I'm gonna discuss little points about it. And if anybody has a question at any time, please feel free to ask me, right? Um, try to ask out loud if you can because my camera's kind of right in the way of the chat button. It's hard for me to see that. So if you, or raise your hand or, Whatever, right? I'm flexible, okay? So we'll start with this. This is distance learning classroom management, but the, the vast majority, if not all of this, pertains to when we come back to campus also, right? The, the number one thing to me is classroom management starts the first day in the classroom. And right now your classroom is whatever your software of choice is, right? It's either Zoom or Google Meets, or I would imagine that's what you're using, one or the other, right? Um, but be prepared to come back to the classroom at some point. Who knows when that is, right? Learn if you're using Zoom or Google Meet, either one, know the buttons, know what each button does, right? Know how to silence somebody quickly. That's your friend, right? Know how to blank somebody's screen. Know how to put them in a waiting room, right? Just, just, just know these things. The, the longer you're with these kids, the more you will, realize, you will understand their, their psyches and how they think about things. And it, it's almost like predetermined, right? You kind of can, I, I know from the minute I started class, who's gonna start trouble, right? You can see it, right? And Aaron's up there laughing because I, I know the kids he has too. I know how it is. You, know, you, you gotta pick these kids out, right? <clears throat> okay, number two, I learned this in tip, okay? Maybe two years ago, right? I don't remember, if, maybe Elena said this. I don't know, Elena or Deidre said this. Don't try to reinvent the wheel. Right? Beg, borrow, or steal. Right? If you see a good idea from somebody when it comes to classroom management, take it, borrow it, steal it. Right? Man and and I, I use the word manipulate on purpose. A lot of people are like, have a, have a problem with the word manipulate, but I, I don't. Right? Manipulate the wheel to work for you. Okay? Whatever works for you, we're all different. Your classrooms are different. The kids in all your classes are different. Make it work for you. Right? Like I just said with David and everybody else, you can adapt or you can suffer, right? I, I choose to adapt, right? And some, sometimes you gotta take one on the kisser sometimes, right? But if it makes everything better in the long run, just do it, right? Well, don't cut your nose off to spite your face, okay? That's number two. Okay, number three, this is a question for you guys. Think about this. Don't answer it yet, but think about this. What is the number one factor in classroom management? The number one factor. I'll tell you what it is a little while, a little ways from now. But think, think about what the number one factor is, right? Number four, Mr. Kevin Bice and I used to talk about this all the time. We still talk, I still talk to Kevin, okay? Check your ego at the door. 
right? Check your ego at the door. And I'm gonna, this next thing I say, don't take this out of context. I'm gonna say it exactly as I have it written down. Expect less, comma, teach more, right? You should have forgotten more than, than these kids know about what you're teaching already. You can't expect them to know what you know, okay? So you, it's your job to teach them. Don't expect them to be, you know, I, I don't expect them to know what I know. I expect them to ask questions to know what I, about what I know, okay? And these next little points is how you get there, right? This to me in my, in my situation, and I would assume this is probably gonna be more, maybe slightly more true for Aaron and myself, but it's the truth for everybody, okay? Be compassionate, open, understanding, fun, and honest when you can be, okay? But be firm and fair when you have to be, right? That goes a long way, right? And I, 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 when they asked me to do this, I thought about how I'm going to do this. And I, I'm not going to come in here and tell you, oh, have a pre-work thing, have a post or have a checkout thing. No, that stuff's important, right? That stuff is important, but it's not nearly as important as the next thing I'm going to tell you right now. Build relationships, okay? Fight, build relationships where the students will air quote, fight for you or advocate for you, right? Build rapport with these kids. Choose wisely who you choose as your leaders, right? Because if you get a knucklehead, right? You get someone trying to bomb your class. I don't have to say anything. You know who does? Three or four of the kids in my class, right? I, I don't have to drop the hammer. I've only had to drop the hammer two or three times in three years now, right? I don't like dropping the hammer because my hammer is ugly. And I, I try not to get to that place, right? Try, don't let yourself ever get to that place. Because as soon as you drop the hammer and they see that they can press those buttons on you, guess what they're going to do, right? It's like, oh, so -and -so, Mr. or Mrs. So-and-so, I know this, this makes them mad. This irritates them. Let me keep doing that. Let me keep doing that, right? Look at me. Look at me. Don't play that game, right? It's just, uh, it's not going to work out well. And that's one of my points down here, right? Never go into battle with a student. You will always lose. Even if you go home thinking that you won, no, you didn't. You lost, right? You straight up lost, okay? And you might feel good about it, but you know what? If, if you're passionate about this stuff, two or three days are going to go by. Maybe a couple hours are going to go by. And you're going to think, I made a mistake. I've done it, right? Nobody's perfect. No one's expecting you guys to be perfect here, right? Um, hey, Matt. Yes, that, sir. That was one that I definitely learned. It was interesting because so many students could give it, could dish it out, they can't but it. they couldn't take it. And, um, and I see it now more so um, even with my nephew or my niece or older friends who just don't get some sarcasm. And so I had to check myself for sure. Yeah, yeah. Sar sarcasm and dry humor to a lot of us might be funny. I love sarcasm and dry humor. You get a kid on the wrong day and they break down, right? Just think about everything you say, right? And, and, and if, you, if you get known as that person, then, then, then those people that you built rapport with and you built, you have the kids that'll be advocate for you, guess what? You might've just lost some of those people. Right? You, you could see the toughest kid just shrink yep. in front of your eyes. You're like, and then you're like, oh, oh, oh. oh. I, went, I went too I'm far. Go, <laughs> Let me later on, apologize to this kid one-on-one. -on -one. Right. That period. Yep. And, okay, so, so here's, here's another thing when it comes to all that stuff, right? Character counts, right? Character counts. Hands down, okay? And, and that goes along with building all this stuff, right? Trust, trustworthiness, respect, responsibility, fairness, caring, and citizenship. All these things, right? If you do these things and they see you actively doing these things, they will advocate for you, okay? They, they you know, I, I don't want to say friends because they're not our friends, they're our students, right? But they will advocate for you, right? Be, be that person that they look up to, right? Be that, as, as uh, who said it, fall on the sword. 
was it Meg? Did Meg say that? Who said fall on the sword? Right? Be be that be that person that they'll fall on the sword for, not literally, right? But they will fall on the sword for you, right? That that's what you want, right? That's when you show respect and trustworthy, if you tell them you're gonna do something and you do it consistently, fairly, you hold the key, right? You hold the key. And that gets back to number three, the number one factor in managing a classroom is what? Someone wanna answer that. Consistency? Consistency, yeah. It's you. Oh. Right? It's you. You, you can you can make or break yourself in the classroom, right? It, it's one hundred percent you, right? You are the king or the queen of your castle, right? All these all these students are just like you know they're just little blank slates. You can turn them. I mean, again, I use the word manipulate. Some people don't like it. I prefer it, right? Manipulate them to act as you want them to act, okay? And, and mani to, like I said, mani manipulate to me, mani manipulation to me is not necessarily a bad thing, right? If used in these kind of contexts, right? Make it work for you, okay? And I know it's different for guys in the shop, right? It's different for someone doing graphic design, different for someone teaching foods, whatever. We all teach different things, right? But when it comes down to it, you're still teaching, right? And if you can't have control of this situation, you're going to suffer, Right? And, and, and you might lose some respect and all these other things when it, when it comes to character. Okay. I got two more things and then I'll just kind of leave it open to open discussion. And, and again, I'm, I'm an open book. I'll tell you whatever you want to know. You, uh, if at any point, anyone ever has a question for me, you can call me, you can email me what you can come visit my classroom, right? Any day, any week, whenever. Okay. Here's another thing. If students don't think that you care, they won't care what you think. Right? That, that's huge to me. Um, and I have some tough, some tough, tough kids, right? Just like I know Aaron does. I know a few of you have some of these too, but imagine having an entire class of those kids, right? Sometimes you go home and you want to pull your hair out. I can't do that, so I have to do something else. You know, it's, uh, it's, again, don't suffer, right? Make it work for you. Manipulate the wheel, right? Take people's ideas, right? Take something that I've told you today and use that, right? And to me, when it comes right down to it with, with classroom management, I mean, classroom management is nothing but people management, right? You're managing people, right? Yeah, you, sure, you're managing the space. And if we have shops, you're managing some tools and all that. But when it comes right down to it, the most important thing you're managing are other human beings right? That, that's a fact, okay? Yeah, a saw could cut someone's finger off, surely, but it takes a person to cut that finger off, right? So if you can manage the person properly, does the saw really pose a problem? I think it does pose a slight problem, but not nearly as much of a problem as if, if you have that, that person, you know, has your respect and they respect you and they respect the rules and, you know, all this stuff. It's, the same, it's no different, right? It's no different, okay? And what I say about that is, Teaching is a people profession, right? It's a, it's a people profession, right? Make it fun. We need to make it kind of fun, right? It's got to be fun, engaging, and educational for everybody. And, and if it isn't, reinvent your wheel. Change it. Make it fun for you, because if it's not fun for you, it's not going to be fun for them, unless they're picking on you the whole time, right? And you, nobody wants that. Nobody wants that. Um, I mean, that's my presentation in a nutshell. If, if anybody has any questions, comments, or concerns, I'll answer. Did, did anybody else have any questions about classroom management at all? I have one for you, Matt. Go for it. Okay, so I have a pair of relatives in my fifth period class. And um, long story short, one is more disruptive than the other. Um, but one of the two of them recently just had a major disturbance on Monday in class where they were, I kicked one of them out for video gaming and he and the relative 
participated or convinced in like audio bombing my Google Meet and I kept kicking them out. And so because they weren't happy with that, they continued to bomb and were very disruptive. So I had to have a conversation with the parent because it got disrespectful. Um, now my personality is very reflective. I treat people the way that they treat me. And so I had a conversation with the young man and I told him, listen, if you don't care about your education, then I can't care more than you do. I can only care as much as you do. So if you are not interested in the material, then come let me know. Cause then we both can go talk to your counselor about getting you put in a class that you are interested in. I feel like he is more disruptive because of the other relative. What's your advice for how to handle them? Do I handle them individually or handle them as a couple that's that's a that's a good that's a good question. Okay, um, I have a couple of those myself. Not this, not right now, but last year in class, I had a couple of those, and it's a little different, right? When we're in person, you can space people out. Plus, I, I know that I have freedoms that you all don't have, right? Every three weeks, my classes change. If I have a problem, I just let the counselors know things change quickly at Orangewood. Okay, I understand it at, at a continuation. Where you're at Citrus, right? Okay, so I would imagine it's citrus, right? You're stuck in, you're stuck with these kids until semester, right? I would imagine, maybe quarter if you're lucky, but it's probably semester over there. I think I don't remember. Um, honestly, here's this is if it was me, I, I don't, I was, I'm not you, I didn't see the situation, but this is what I'll, I will say. It kind of, it kind of goes back to like the, you know, the, the character of it, right? Obviously, they're disruptive, right? Whatever they're doing, video gaming bombing, whatever. I would probably pull them aside separately, right? Talk to each one of them, figure out wh what's their angle, right? What's the problem? Maybe they don't like the class, right? Then, then that's when you have a, you know, email the counselor, or walk in and talk with the counselor, you know, wh whatever you need to do. Um, again, you know, we, we are electives and sometimes we get, well, especially me, I'm the only one on my campus. So I am the dumping ground. Okay. I get the rough, the nobody wants some of these kids right so like with kids like that with, which are like you know siblings or cousins or you know whatever maybe even just best friends i would pull them apart separately and try to figure out the angle right and then play one against the other i mean it, it's it sounds it, it i make it sound easy i know that it's not okay I, I understand that it's not you're i i do not envy your position right i, I don't um but the best advice i can give you is to, is to kind of separate them figure you know figure one out figure what makes this one tick and what makes this one tick and then when they get together figure out and then try to have some kind of have something set up to where you know okay i can do this maybe put one in a breakout room maybe ask one to leave and you know whatever you need to do and try to just mitigate the loss i guess mitigate the loss of time that's that's the best i have for you right now i mean i, I could i could do some research on something like that um, i appreciate it thanks matt Yep. Now we have time for about one more question. Anybody else? Matt, I just wanted to piggyback off of something you said about what people really, uh, in this case, our student, when I had my marketing business consistently, it was one of my tag lines that I always said, people don't care how much you know, they just want to know how much you care. And yeah. That's very, very true, even with the students, because the moment that they find out that you are um, compassionate, that you have empathy, that you really listen to him, they feel heard, that turns a student totally around. Yeah. And, and, and maybe that, uh, Chanel, that, that, that might work for you, right? Just even just, just, a, just a light. You don't, you don't got to go in there and like be all crazy and flip your, flip your own thought process upside down, but do yourself a favor and try to try to get into one of their heads, right? Try, try to make one of them an ally, right? Make, make one of them your advocate, right? Whatever that takes and then see if it works out. If it works out, then great. If it doesn't, well, you tried, right? You tried, but, but that's the truth. We can sit up here and flap our gums all day, right? And, and I tell my kids all the time, hey, I forgot of, of all the credentials that I have, I forgot enough in every one of them I forgot more than you know. So my job here is to teach you what I know, be respectful towards you, right? Have some empathy, right? So, and again, I know it's different at school to school, but like 94% of my population is poverty, mm -hmm. right? 
Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Matt. If you guys could all give him a thumbs up or a clap or something like that, um, all the above. And so Matt is one of you. He, he is a cry rock teacher. And um, before, we, before he becomes a best-selling author, I want to encourage you to um, reach out to him and get his email. He's, he would be in, if you just do an email, he's in the book. Um, and you guys can certainly reach out to him. He's a great resource um, and a huge heart. That's what I love most about him is he just, he genuinely cares about his students, genuinely cares about his colleagues. So thank you so much, Matt, um, just for your words. Um, and if you could do me a favor, email me your list that you made, because um, I would like to share that with everybody so they can reflect on it um, okay. and then and have it in front of them. So what we're gonna do now is I'm, we're gonna take a five minute break. Um, go ahead and, and stand up, stretch and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then I will start the timer and that way you guys can, like I said, just go ahead and, and give yourself a stretch break. So five minutes, we'll be back at 4.05. So well, welcome back everyone. Um, so what we're going to do next is, uh, as I said, each month we're gonna have um, all of you taking turns in sharing with us and teaching us what a, one of the California uh, teaching profession standards are. And the very first one we're going to learn about this month um, comes from Meg, Shelley, and Ryan, and they're teaching us standard one, um, which is engaging and supporting all students for learning. So I guess I'll start us off because I made uh, the first couple of slides. Um, so we were put in charge of kind of sharing with you guys how um, we have the first, you know, standard for teaching um, for the first one, which basically the main principle of this first standard is to engage and support all students in learning. And this can be done a lot of different ways, but um, we kind of wanted to highlight the main purpose of this standard because it is very important, um, you know, kind of as Matt already talked about, um, you know, during his stuff is that it basically kind of ensures that teachers really know and they care for their students. Um, it allows them to really engage them in learning and it, because it connects them to you know, real careers, real situations, you know, real, you know, the struggles that, you know, industry people have to go through, um, you know, principles that we have to follow, um, you know, all of the policies and procedures that are necessary in the job that we'll be doing. So, you know, it kind of connects it to a real life situation. Um, and this, you know, this principle is really important because it gives students the ability to increase their critical thinking skills, to increase their problem solving skills in a real job situation. Um, it also gives them hands on experience, which I mean, as CryRop teachers, we're professionals at and uh, we do it best of giving them sort of that hands on skills, um, you know, in order to be able to graduate, grab their diploma and uh, go right into a job interview and be able to nail it. Um, and then one of the more important ones um, of this is to really kind of focus on the reflection abilities as well. You know, they're able to kind of determine, you know, they're in control of their future, you know, what they learn, what they gain, how they, you know, phrase or form their own sort of knowledge is going to help benefit them later. So I wanted to kind of go over, um, I'm always not going to go over all of them because that would be ridiculous. I'm only going to go over two of them here. Um, we all kind of grabbed two of them to kind of present in our own ways. Um, but these are the six substandards of, um, I think it's S SCTP1. Um, so 1.1 is using knowledge of students to engage them in learning. Number two, connecting learning to um, prior knowledge, backgrounds, life experiences, et cetera. Um, 1.3, connecting subject matter to meaningful real life contexts. Uh, 1.4, using a variety of instructional strategies. Um, 1.5, promoting critical thinking through problem solving and reflection. And finally, 1.6, monitoring student learning and adjust and being able to um, adjust instruction while doing that teaching. So I'm gonna pass it on to Ryan, um, who's gonna be sharing the first two standards with you. Awesome, thanks, Meg. Um, real quick, uh, w if you wouldn't mind, Meg, could you unshare your screen real quick? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Um, okay, just because I utilized uh, Nearpod a little bit for my section, if you guys could go into the chat, um, there's a link that I just posted in there. If you wanna click on it, it'll take you over. Um, some of it is just the same slides, but there is some uh, that they're will be um, collaboration and stuff. So I'll give you guys a little bit of time to get in. Uh, so the first step 
and 1.1 is about like using knowledge of students to engage them and like the first step of using knowledge of your students is that you need to actually get that knowledge right um, and this has been made a lot more difficult through um, distance learning and kind of not really getting face time with your students all my kids leave their mute buttons on like all the time um, I know that's like the flip side of that is that they never leave it on or never turn it on and that's pretty horrible too but um, at least when it's always muted, it's really tough to get to know the kids. Um, so you have to be creative in the ways that you uh, get to know them and try to get to know them. So um, so that has been an issue with distance learning, but I uh, just wanted you guys to take a minute here. I'll start moving forward. Um, if you could, uh, we'll skip the collaboration board, but as you can see, there is the question on there. So how do you go about getting to know your students? Um, whether you started distance learning this year or if you started it at the end of last year, um, if you could share in the chat maybe some creative ways that you have found to get to know your students, and then I'll go fix the other Nearpod slides while you guys are doing that. All right, let's start getting through this. Sorry about that. Okay, um, so making bell work um, assignments to get to know for like get to know you topics. Uh, that's great. Through their art, that's cool. Um, having an assignment where they make a brag sheet all about them. That sounds cool. Um, so they can tell things that they're proud of, things that they are working on to improve themselves, goals. Uh, that's really cool. I stole weekly check-in um, that we discussed last time. That's good. Um, Nearpod and Flipgrid are what I use. That's great. I do love Flipgrid. Um, mm -hmm. Students made a Google slide all about themselves mm -hmm. and shared that with the class. That's really cool. Awesome. So there are some really cool creative ways um, out there that you guys have uh, been doing, which is awesome. Uh, let me real quick share my screen here. Uh, so Nearpod, this was an example assignment that I gave to my kids. Um, that was just like a Flipgrid. It's kind of the generic Flipgrid, but it was really cool. It was really helpful. Not all the kids contributed, but the ones that did, um, it really gave me an opportunity to get to know them. And because I teach video production, um, it kind of opened up the opportunity for me to create some really cool assignments. So I just wanted to show you just some quick snippets of the ones that I got um, and then how I used those uh, to create assignments. One cool fact about me is that I am a car enthusiast. I'm into vehicles, I love cars, and they're everything to me. My favorite movie is Space Jam with Michael Jordan in it. And a fun fact about myself is I play basketball. A little fact about me is that I love rock music, metal, you know, different kind of bands like ACDC, some Queen. Hello, my name is And one interesting thing about me is I like to play the drums and my favorite movie is The Sandlot. Mr. Pierce, if you want a drum sometime, just hit me up. Roll it. Hi, I'm My favorite movie is either Back to the Future or Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Fun fact about me is I submitted an audition tape for the show Survivor, and I'll be expecting a callback sometime in September. <laughs> All right, so that's uh, some of the kids that I got, which are awesome. Um, let's skip that. Okay, so uh, what I learned from those videos, right? So student number one likes cars. Um, so what I could do with that is I can have them create um, a mock like uh, car commercial, right? So maybe if they have a car or if their parents have a car or even if they just wanna cut together um, some of the cars that they really like that they find on the internet, things like that, they can make a video based on that. Um, and then the student number two liked basketball and Kobe Bryant. I saw the Kobe Bryant um, jersey in the background. So uh, he can make kind of a tribute video to you know Kobe and some of his greatest uh, moments and stuff like that. Uh, and then student three likes rock music. And then you see in the background, she likes The Office as well. Um, student number four likes the Sandlot and drumming. I mentioned that I like drumming and I think that's where that came from. Um, but they both uh, liked rock music. So that tells me that maybe these would be a good pair of kids to put together in a group assignment. Um, and then rock music, of course, I can have them make music videos, um, stuff like that. And then my final student, he, um, 
he said he likes Back to the Future, but he also said that he was trying to get on Survivor. Uh, what that tells me is maybe he likes reality TV stuff, so we can do like a mock reality TV show thing, or we can even, it at least tells me that he's comfortable, or at least he thinks he'll be comfortable on camera, which is really helpful um, because not all students, actually a lot of students don't feel comfortable on camera. So, um, so just from some quick snippets of each student's video, I got to know them um, in ways that I just, it wouldn't have been possible um, if I was to just sit here and talk to them. Even in my classroom, if I'm like, hey guys, unmute your mics and tell me, you know, this about yourself. I'll have three kids contribute, you know what I mean? Like it's not usually uh, very successful. So this was a really cool assignment. Um, Flipgrid is just the way to go, I think, for, for getting to know students in a way that um, is really beneficial during distance learning time, so. So um, one one point three and four is about connecting subject matter to m meaningful real life um, context, and one point four is using a variety of in instructional strategies, resources, and technologies to meet the students' learning needs. Um, when it comes to like connecting subject matter to like meaningful real life context. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I, I kind of had this situation where all the kids were just talking about how they do nothing and they sit on the couch um, all day long and they're just constantly on a laptop or their phone. And so it kind of gave me the idea to start um, ha talking about like nutrition and exercise for two weeks. We did nutrition one week, exercise the other, um, because that's kind of real life right now where they're all just kind of sitting on the couch and so during nutrition week I made them um, keep a food log for three days of what they were eating and they had to share that with me via Google Doc or a Google slide. I gave them the choice of how they wanted to share that with me um, and then they also had to make a Flipgrid uh, video um, showing me one meal that they were eating and so that was kind of fun and then um, same thing with during exercise week, they had to do a flip grid video where I, I had to see them exercising for 10 minutes. And then they had to kind of log their exercise too for three days and share that with me, however they chose to share it with me. And then um, for 1.4, when it comes to using a variety of instructional strategies, um, I've just kind of been implementing everything lately where I'm using Nearpod, um, I'm creating my own Nearpods, like I created my own for exercise and nutrition. Um, sometimes I do menti.com to do a check-in with them, how they're feeling that day, or um, been using Flipgrid. They're gonna actually, this, this week and next week, we're kind of working on culinary. So they're gonna be doing a um, video where they have to show me um, them cooking, preparing a meal and then see the final outcome of it. And then, um, oh, and then Kahoot. So um, during uh, exercise week, I had them create their own Kahoots and they had to come up with five exercise related questions on their Kahoots. And then we played them during class one day. So it kind of made it a fun day where we just got to play everybody's Kahoot. So, um, yeah, that's about it. Using Nearpods and stuff for quizzes and um, cahoots and um, stuff like that. So that's that's about it on my 1.3 and 4. With 1.5 specifically, it kind of comes down to, you know, being able to work with students to kind of develop their own ability to work not only independently, but also with others. Um, but it kind of also builds on this like constructive interaction ability between students, you know, putting them on teams, you know, having them compete with each other, um, you know, opportunities to kind of discuss or think about you know, content, uh, content in a greater uh, or more grander scheme of things. Um, and it also kind of creates that opportunity for students to answer and kind of control multiple, um, you know, solutions and solve problems. And one of the great ways that I do this is I actually play a, um, a game of Jeopardy with my students that typically, what I'll do is I'll do it for test prep. 
Um, and it kind of it gives them the ability to kind of compete against each other and evaluate kind of what they know. So, I'll, you know, put like the categories that are going to be on their exam into this Jeopardy game. And then they can sort of click, you know, their, um, you know, they can click their categories and they have to basically answer the questions. So it's kind of a good way for me to basically have them, you know, collaborate in a positive way and sort of discuss and like take turns and build on each other's ideas and, you know, kind of test each other. So I did input some instructional strategies that um, I usually use to do these things. And these are not just my ideas. These are other ideas. Um, just basically like multiple assignments and multiple prompts, um, you know, kind of promote that higher level, like open ended questions where they have to give you a straight answer. Um, you know, role play situations, you know, kind of like Jeopardy where they're kind of just put into the game and they have to like compete against each other. Um, peer sharing and editing and group led discussions too. I like to do debates in my class. We just finished doing a debate on um, autonomy and euthanasia in medicine and like whether or not it is appropriate for, um, you know, doctors to basically euthanize people, kind of similar how we euthanize animals to be a humane, you know, end of life solution. You know, does that right also extend to humans as well, or does that violate certain principles that we have in place as a society? So it was kind of a cool debate that we were able to have, and it, it really kind of had them discuss and think about, you know, really challenging content that they're going to be presented with in a medical field, for sure. And then finally, 1.6, um, it really encourages students to develop and have the confidence to think independently. Um, it breaks down assignments into like kind of components for understanding. Um, and it's about kind of using, you know, with you kind of reusing rubrics and guidelines to evaluate the work progress. So you're able to determine whether or not the student is actually engaged in the information and they're absorbing the information while you're giving that engaging material. Um, it's also a method for checking for understanding. And so you can kind of revise your plans accordingly. So it's kind of that, um, you know, checking yourself before you're wrecking yourself type situation. Um, something that I personally do is I do learning logs every week. So at the end of every week, I kind of have my students fill out a learning log that basically is a good platform for them to tell me exactly what they learned for the week, what they did, what you know what they liked about the lesson what they didn't like about the lesson and any questions that they have about it and at the very end i have them say how can you take this lesson that i taught you and connect it to your real life how is this important to where you want to go why you want to go there etc so it kind of really kind of puts the two things together uh in a positive way so again some instructional strategies that do these things um student presentations debates and oral discussions which i mentioned i do before as well um you know kind of editing and justifying rubrics you know kind of as you become a seasoned teacher i'm sure this becomes easier um, over the time to justify why you have certain things in your rubric and then self-evaluation you know allow the students to identify what they did great and what maybe they didn't do so well so that um, you know you're able to adjust the grade as needed so in order to kind of wrap this up, I do kind of have a self-assessment for you guys. So if you want to grab like a piece of paper or if you're really good with numbers, which I am not, I always have to use a calculator or use my fingers because I'm a child and can't do math properly. Um, for those of you who are math wonders, um, you guys can probably just keep track in your heads, but keep track of your score. How often do you employ these strategies in your classroom? I'm gonna give you a sentence and you're going to kind of rate yourself on a scale of one to three. One being never, two being occasionally or sometimes, and three being always or often that you do these strategies in your classroom currently, um, or maybe you wanna do these strategies later. Okay, first one, my students can actively utilize a variety of instructional strategies and technologies while they're learning. One, two, or three. My students take ownership of their learning by being able to choose from a wide range of methods I offer. One, two, or three. I gather extensive information about my students' cultural backgrounds, prior knowledge, life experiences, and interests. One, two, or three. See, I've already lost count in my brain. So that's how my brain works. <laughs> but that's okay. I've already rated myself, so I'm good. 
My students are regularly engaged in my curriculum because it's relevant to their lives and to society. One, two, or three. I teach my students critical thinking by designing complex problems for them to discuss and then solve. One, two, or three. My students have the ability to pose and solve real world problems on their own related to the content. One, two, or three. I am flexible in my instruction and make adjustments to lessons to improve learning outcomes when needed. One, two, or three. So go ahead and tally up those scores for me. If you are good at math, hopefully you already have your score. Um, and if you are bad at math, please take time to add your scores. However, if you scored between about a 17 or a 21, you're the bomb.com, congratulations. You have a really solid management of CSTP1 in your classroom already. You're a rock star or you're a quick study, one of the two. Can I get like a show of hands for any of you guys who scored between a 17 and a 21? Like who's already the bomb.com? Okay, a couple of you. Um, if you scored between a 16 and 11, not bad, really good start. Um, make sure that you continue to kind of adjust your curriculum to kind of meet those adjustments and improve the quality of your instruction. Did anyone score between that? 16 and 11? Mo probably most of you guys, huh? When I did this, I, the mine, that was me. I scored between that when I did mine. And then I won't, uh, I won't make any y'all feel bad. But if you scored a 10 or below, that's okay. Oh my God, Chris, stop. You're lying to me. <laughs> if you were a 10 or below, you know, make sure that you were listening and make sure that you kind of take some of the strategies that all three of us shared. Um, you know, more practice and research is needed and that's okay. Like, you know, like, like Chris keeps saying, like, this is, this is such a weird time and then you're never doing this, you know, no one's ever done this before, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, that was my invitation <laughs> of Chris, blah, blah, which blah. makes no sense. Um, anyway, so that, um, that actually kind of can say blah blah blah. <laughs> <laughs> that um that kind of concludes our presentation. Um, thank you guys so much for listening. And there we go. Fantastic, good <laughs> job, you guys. Thank you so much. Great job. And and yeah, I would encourage you. Um, so so when you guys um, I'll have you share your slides with me, and then we'll all include them together. And I encourage you go back, think about this stuff. And as they said, you know, you're you're making content. Um, and engaging not just a few of your students, how are you making your content engaging all of your students? So um, very, very great job. Thank you again for, for being here. And as, as we said, um, the next time we will meet, it will be October 22nd from, from three to five, uh, same thing. And what I, and I don't think we have any parking lot stuff. So um, one of the questions was posted is, do you, do you think if you don't do all the platforms like Nearpods and Kahoot, Flipgrid, a teacher won't be successful during distance learning? And I'm gonna ask you guys like that question. What would be your answer to that? No, my answer is no, you don't have to do everything. <laughs> yeah, don't do everything. Pick something, get good at it, love it, and then learn something else. Absolutely. Anybody else wanna chime in on that? What Wendy said. Because <laughs> it can be overwhelming. It, it is. To learn it all. Um, and I've learned that, not the hard way, but for myself, trying to incorporate a lot of the different platforms on behalf of the students um, can be just as overwhelming to them as it is to you, especially if you're teaching my grade level, which is high school, because you have to consider that if they have six total periods, they may have five other classrooms and five other instructors that use five other combinations of platforms that may not be any of the platforms that you use. And so now they're learning multiple platforms for this one class. And if they experience any difficulties or troubleshooting, now you have to be advanced enough to work through that with them so that they can still get the engagement and the lesson done. And I'm still having problems with Nearpod being able to get students in. I have a student who still hasn't, has never graced a Nearpod screen on his device. Mm -hmm. And so I'm still learning it. He hasn't even stepped foot into the virtual Nearpod lesson. Um, and so I, that really hit home for me and said, okay, well then we could just like 
coast right now until everyone in every period can get into Nearpod. And then that'll give me as an instructor time to familiarize myself with something else and see if I want to incorporate it or if I don't. Very good. Awesome. Thank you, Chanel. Yeah, exactly it. So as I said, if you guys remember this analogy from the beginning, I said it's kind of like Starbucks. Starbucks has thousands upon thousands of different flavors and drinks you can have, but eventually you get to the point where you decide what your favorite drink is and you really get to stick with that and become really great with that. For me, it's a venti um, dragon fruit refresher with lemonade. So um, <laughs> good stuff. So with that being said, the other thing we're going to do with the parking lot, I'm going to start emailing it out sooner. And I'm, not only do I want you to post questions if you have a question, but just throw some topics up there as well. Some things you want to discuss during TIP, whether it be grading, whether it be classroom management, whether it be what's the best drink at Starbucks. So with that being said, we are done. Um, again, our next one's going to be Thursday, October 22nd from three to five. Um, and that you guys have a great night. Please please, please do something fun this weekend for yourself. Watch a movie, play a video game, go outside, read a book, whatever it may be, but do something fun this weekend. That is your homework for the month. And we'll see you all later. Adios. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Hey, thanks a lot, Chris. Thank you, Chris and David. Bye, everybody.